guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title, we are talking about the most recent collection from The Row. So this is their winter 2024-25 collection. I think we're at this far into the year. What is so wild to me about this collection is it's become one of the most unintentionally controversial collections. And it's not because of the content, but it was how they decided they wanted to present the show in this very TikTok, social media, Instagram worthy era of fashion, The Row said, we're not having any phones at the show. Instead, they had a notebook, a pencil at which you could write notes if you pleased, but really you could go to the show and actually enjoy the show. There was no pressure to film it. There was no pressure to post about it. But of course, this simple act, while a lot of people appreciated the row for doing this, a lot of people were actually kind of upset. But I found it so interesting how many articles were written about this. From what I understood, there was really like three main critiques. I posted about this on my community tab. First critique that I saw quite heavily, and this was expressed by Civil Soul, and Civil Soul stated, it can be frustrating for the fans of a brand like myself because not only I can't afford it but now I can't even see how the clothes look but it's their brand they can do whatever they want anyways and I kind of understand where this person's coming from it's not only exclusionary in terms of price but in who also gets to see it at least when it's immediately dropped I think there are a lot of people have like genuine appreciation for the work at the row but it's because the price of these items are so expensive you kind of have to appreciate from afar and I think this is true across the board when it comes to fashion like you can appreciate Chanel or Louis Vuitton and want to enjoy the shows without necessarily feeling like you have to buy into it. You can definitely take inspiration. All eyes are on these fashion shows, what trickles down in fashion. But thankfully, The Row, just a week later, decided to release images. So of course it wasn't immediate. A journalist I really enjoy following, Rachel Tashin Wise, had actually reported that the images would be released in a week. And she posted her review on the show on her Instagram. So ultimately, we will be able to see this collection in in real time, in real life, once it hits the stores, once it's available on their website in six months. And The Row does have a website which is accessible to everyone. We saw the images drop a week later. Another critique that we saw was there were journalists that felt this was very frustrating. Vanessa Friedman actually took to Twitter to express her feelings. When she was asked about this from a journalist perspective, she stated the policy frustration. I don't feel that taking some pictures interferes with my ability to fully consider what I am seeing. And I think I'm grown enough to decide that for myself. But the reality is, is there are not people like Vanessa Friedman. A lot of people will go to fashion shows, they'll be glued to their phones, not truly taking in the shows. You look at some of these fashion shows and you see these K-pop celebrities and everyone wanted to take photos and it becomes more about who's sitting at the front row than the actual fashion. It becomes more about the act of taking photos for social media. This is Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen wanting to draw the line somewhere. As a journalist, you want to report on things in real time because that's what's most newsworthy and having images released a week after and maybe not necessarily being the first to cover it. And it does create a barrier for her to report on something in such an instant way if she wants to use images. And while I totally respect the freedom of the press argument, I totally agree with that. This policy ultimately was not about Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen trying to prevent journalists from reporting. If anything, they wanted people to be fully immersed in the show. Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen for the show, they said, okay, let's just enjoy the show for what it is. If there's anything important you need to write down, you've got a notebook, then actually take in what we're seeing. And then the last critique I kind of saw, which I thought was very interesting, was this feeling very undemocratic. Not only does it prevent people from posting about shows, apparently they didn't invite influencers. I guess we'll never really know because no one was posting photos about it. This is interesting because the influencers have kind of given the public sort of a behind the scenes perspective of when they go to sh these shows, take these photos and us view and like regular people can get their perspective. So I think there's sort of that removing that ability for more people to have access to these shows. There's a lot of conversation about this on TikTok. Like I understand not being able to post about something immediately, instantly, not having access as an influencer. The photos were available a week later. In six months, you can actually look at the clothes in real life. And I think that'll even be a better observation of these items. You let me know in the comments and ultimately, 
I saw this article and it was something like Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen wants you to touch grass and that is exactly how I feel about this. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's just chillax, let's just enjoy what the show has had to offer us. So look one already just kind of did it for me. We have this beautiful, very ladylike coat. There's just this love for another era, another time, the way women dressed in the past. This piece looks like it was something not from just your grandmother's closet, your great grandmother's closet. The way women really cared for and cherished their clothing, the beautiful volume, the lush fabrics. And you think about women in the 1950s, right? Those big full skirts and then paired with these dainty shoes. There's just this love for another era, another time the way women dressed in the past. There's something about our current very digital era that we are missing. When we go back to this kind of time period, we just don't feel in fashion anymore. Generations survived without social media and honestly, we'll be okay if we're off our phones for 20 minutes. By the way, after looking at this coat, I kind of just went on a deep dive trying to look at coats from the 1950s, looking at the gloves, the hats, the dainty shoes. Look too. So here we have this very unusual ornate hat. Of course, a beautiful beautiful coat, which the row does so well. We had these very unusual vertical striped pants. They were kind of giving me subtle jester vibes, kind of different. And then we have these heels. And what was very interesting was throughout the collection, there were all of these sort of like panel pieces. Like they just really reminded me of Frank Lloyd Wright, these strong geometric symmetrical compositions. Some of them look like Asian beaded abacuses, works of art that you probably see on their Instagram. Look three. Oh my gosh, this coat guys, it's just beautiful warm sienna color. It looks like it's like just before sunset. The photography of this collection is kind of just out of this world. It was done by photographer Jamie Hawksworth, who's photographed the row collections in the past, but he has this very distinctive documentary style photography where he sort of captures the essence of everyday life. There's something about the lighting, the contrast, the composition. It felt like very intimate. The beautiful afternoon shadows really showcase the sumptuous folds of these coats and just this clothing in general. And here this model is holding this clutch. It's kind of hard to see a lot of the bags in this collection. Look for, we only really get to see an up close image of this raw hem. Looks like it's a jacket or coat. We're seeing this theme of this doubling of collars. So for look five, I just love this look. I feel like this is something that could easily be recreated. Getting like a black skirt with a little bit more detail, with a little bit more intrigue. I would love that skirt, but I don't know if I could afford it. This next look was very unusual, strange juxtaposition of this typical winter toque with these ornate metal hardware bits. You'd see these kind of hardware bits on a vintage handbag. And then look seven, we have this very boxy double-breasted coat, very unisex. Look eight, very nice cashmere sweater or dress, just very simple, minimal, elegant. Look nine, we have quite the opposite, this very thick plush fur looking coat. I don't even want to think about the price. I'm gonna guess it's like at least four or five Margos, but I could definitely see some like Kendall Jenner sporting this jacket on her next revenge post breakup look. Now for look 10, we have this classic suit. It would not be a collection from the row without a good suit. And then we have this crocodile clutch. Look 11, we have this incredibly lightweight looking coat. The fabric looks almost paper thin, just the whole collection. And just some of the art used with this show. There's sort of this East meets West vibe, which honestly I totally love as an East meets West person myself. That is very much the road to create clothing that is almost so impossibly lightweight. Look 12, we have this absolutely beautiful dress with these furry or almost feather-like sleeves, this furry or sort of hair trim on the bottom. Could definitely picture someone like Jennifer Lawrence or Rosie Huntington Whiteley wearing this, that kind of like ethereal glow that the row gives them when they wear their clothing. Like, and I know that to most people, when we look at minimalist brands like the Row or Totem or Peter Doe, I think there's this perception that a lot of these minimal brands are very similar, but a brand like Peter Doe or Helmut Lang would never do something like this. There's definitely the softness, this lightness, 
this sort of ethereal quality about some of the pieces from the row. Next we have this sweater and column skirt look, just very nice wardrobe staples. With look 14, we have this raw hem dress and then the shoulder bag we can't really see. Look 15, we have this very beautiful shapely coat. It's not clothing that your mom wore, maybe your grandmother or great grandmother wore in like the best kind of way. It's clothing from a time where things were much simpler. Look 16, we have this very paper thin looking blazer with this dual collar. This is a theme we're seeing with the row here. It looks so paper thin, so lightweight, very much the row. For look 17, I don't really know what the material Material of this dress is, but it's definitely more textural. We're seeing these snakeskin or python, some kind of exotic sort of snake-like pump. Now we have look 18, very beautiful sumptuous fur coat. Again, probably like minimum five Margos for this. Look 19, I love this dress, like very, very thin, delicate, pleating, details, origami level like intricacy. Look 20, we have kind of this raw edge textured top and then these coil ribbon earrings are very unusual and cool. For look 21, we have this beautiful glistening set. This is something I would definitely love to look up close. This collection is a very textural show. We have this dress or like long coat, very Izumiyaki. And then we have this very beautiful dress. This high contrast photography really shows the texture. I think with the row does dresses, while they're not necessarily the most over the top, your typical like red carpet looks, I always think they're quite nice. This look 24, again, this reminds me very much of that Izumiyaki dress that Mary Kate Olsen wore several years ago. Go. And then look 25, this lady's like ready to leave the office, her day is done. Look 26, absolutely love this one. We have this lady, oh, she's just from another era, another generation, definitely giving Dita Blair vibes back in the day, or actually, you know what, even today. The way that the row idolizes women from previous generations, from previous decades, this is from like my grandmother's or even like my great grandmother's generation. And then look 27, just kind of a nice dress. Look 28, very quintessential the row, this very classic long coat from the row. The row will always have a recollection of beautiful range of coats. And then look 29, we have just this very simple off the shoulder dress. This final look, they're going out with a bang here. It's just one of their classic cashmere sweaters. And then you've got the Margot bag. So yes, that is the collection. And I'm gonna make one final point about this supposedly controversial show. Again, everything I say in this video video is just truly my opinion. This is not a factual video. This is just truly a personal opinion. But I will also say I am going to prioritize the artistic and creative expression. If this is how Mary Kay and Ashley want to produce their show, so be it. I was reading in Vogue how this collection was going to be shot on film. So this from Mark Holgate. A colleague mentioned on exiting that the runway was going to be shot on film, which takes time to come to life. It's not quick, it's not instant, and it can be deleted with a quick tap of the finger. Instead, in its analog way, it creates images which are tangible physical objects which can stick around a long time if you look after them. Think about what the row makes and couldn't you say exactly the same about that? Just me personally, I'm just always going to prioritize the creative expression, the artistic vision, over the timelines of journalists. Again, this is a collection that we got to see online a week later. Truly anyone has access to their website. In six months, we're gonna get a very thorough view of this collection. I've done several of these videos looking at the full collection. I recently actually just did a video of their recent spring 2024 collection that was dropped online. Sure, we don't have influencers sitting at the front row, but I actually think the best coverage is when I see women in real time, in real life, when I think about about someone like a Neela Mahuja or a Layla Sophia or Layla Sophia's mom, when I see them showcase their collections, showcase the beautiful quality of these pieces that does so much more than when I see footage from an influencer. The appeal of the row is not in the celebrity. And yes, we could critique, oh, you know, it's important that influencers get to sit at these shows and we can make that case. But if I'm gonna be totally honest, greatest inspiration are from these, I don't wanna say ordinary, 
ordinary women. I would say these women are quite extraordinary, but they're a little bit more relatable. And while we are seeing more influencers buying the row, the appeal of the Margot was never the influencers. The irony, this whole talk around the rows, elitism of them not inviting influencers. The rows rise in popularity didn't come from them gifting their handbags to influencers. Yes, we've seen some celebrities, Kendall Jenner and Zoe Kravitz and Jennifer Lawrence wear the row. It's a very niche subset of people that already have the style anyways. But the row customer was never like, oh my gosh, I saw Zoe Kravitz wear this handbag. Now I need to have it. The row has never needed influencers in the way we've understood influencers to be. The Margot bag, which has recently reached more popularity, has been a bag that's been around for six years. This is a bag that had a very niche market of people, wear it, talk about it, really enjoy it. At the end of the day, the row doesn't really need influencers in the way that we perceive influencers to be. And if it doesn't align with the branding, it doesn't align with the marketing, it doesn't even align with the aesthetic, which is really just this very extreme vision of minimal fashion. Although I would actually say this collection is quite ornate relative to some of their recent collections. The Rose aim is to create the highest quality minimalist fashion on the market. At its time of its inception, there really wasn't much on the market that offered that sort of extreme high luxury minimal fashion. There's definitely more on the market now, but I think the Rose is at the top of this very niche food chain. At the end of the day, this is and will always be Mary Kane Ashley's personal passion project that can exist outside of the fashion, marketing, industrial complex. And the Rose customer base, frankly, is not really that interested in whether or not it's participating in it either. So yes, that is my video. Would love to know, was there anything that stood out? to you with this collection? Did you feel that this move to remove phones from their shows and just not have influencers come to their show? What do you guys think about that? Thank you so much for joining me in another video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.